hi. I didn't see you there. Well, I guess since I have your attention, I might as well tell you this crazy story that happened to me while living in Chicago. Oh, run along, dear. I was just getting off work, and um, I work in a bar, so I decided to have a few drinks. I mean, what's the point of working in a bar if you can't have a few drinks after your shift is over, am I right? And needless to say, I got pretty drunk. Not like shit-faced drunk, but you know, that kind of drunk where you're in between shit-faced and buzzed. So I decided to take the train home. And I take the train to, uh, to the Lawrence stop off the red line. And as I get off the Lawrence stop and wait for the bus, I suddenly have a horrible urge to piss. And the problem with Chicago, as many of you probably know, is there aren't a lot of public restrooms. I decide, well, hey, I'll just go around the corner of the Aragon, use the alley. I mean, it's kind of out of the public's view. I won't get in trouble. So as I turn the corner, that's when I notice there's a concert going on at the Aragon, and there are a lot of people in that alley. I decide to go with plan B, which is the parking lot that's right next to the Aragon Theater. So I go back there, I urinate, I get rid of it, and that's when a, a police cruiser suddenly comes back around, cuts me off, and two police leap out of the car, and suddenly what goes through my head is, oh my god. They know what I was doing back there. I'm gonna get public intox because I'm drunk. They're gonna get me on indecent exposure because I was using the restroom in a public area. Uh, I'm gonna have to be labeled as a sex offender. I'm gonna have to go door to door, introduce myself as, hi, I'm Jeremiah Wolf. I'm a sex offender, I live in your neighborhood. I got caught urinating in public. It's just embarrassing and that's gonna follow you your whole life. So you gotta keep in mind, this is all running in my head all at once. And then suddenly I realize, okay, if there's only one way out of this, Jeremiah, and that's if you play it cool. And so uh, I go in there with that attitude, and the cops come up to me and say, Good evening, sir. What were you doing back there? And I say, well, I was waiting for the bus. You were waiting for the bus. I got off work. I uh, was just waiting for that bus. And I can tell right now he's not buying it. He asked me for my ID and my address, I gave him that, and then he asked if he could check the bag I had with me. I let him do that, they didn't find any incriminating evidence. And then one of the officers asks me, well do you have any distinguishing marks, scars, tattoos? And I said, none that I know of. And I guess he didn't hear me because then he said, excuse me? And then that's when drunk me came out and said, none that I know of. My heart stopped, I nearly shit my pants, and I kept thinking to myself, well, you did it, dumbass. I mean, now that I was gonna be thrown in the back of this cruiser, and I was gonna be spending the night in county, and you know, not really gonna have a good, nice evening, let's just say. Both cops stared at me for probably like 30 seconds without saying a word. Then finally one of them said, Well, you know, you need to be careful around here. A lot of people get mugged and, uh, you know, there's just a lot of unsavory characters. So, you know, just be careful, be on your way. So the police let me go on my way. I, they drove off and then I walked to the bus stop and I decided, okay, just wait for the bus, go home. Suddenly out of my peripheral vision, I can see a squad car that's just sitting there and the same two cops are sitting inside it, watching me like a hawk, making sure I get on that bus. You know, I guess also to make sure that I don't whip it out and just start painting the sidewalks of Chicago before any of that stuff happened. The bus came, I get on it, it took me home, and I passed out, had a great sleep and a hangover the next morning. And that's my Chicago story.